So welcome to the Dr. Gundry podcast. Okay, everybody's been asking, could a single supplement significantly increase your lifespan? My guest thinks it's entirely possible and you're about to learn why. In just a moment, I'll speak with Chris Burris. Chris is the owner of SES Research, the first company to deliver My Vital C, the world's first nano antioxidant to the public. When Chris learned a Nobel Prize winning chemical tested by NASA had been proven to almost double the lifespan in mammals, he made it his mission to get it into the hands of people around the world. Today we'll talk about that chemical ESS60 and how it can help you one dose at a time. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Dr. Gundry, for having me here. I'm, I'm actually so excited to be here. I've watched a number of your podcasts, listened to two of your books. It's, it's actually really an honor to be here. Oh, my gosh. All right, that's enough. Well, that's it for the Dr. Gundry <laughs> podcast. Tune in next week. No, 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 don't go away. This is going to be too good to miss. So, your background is fascinating. You have experience in mechanical engineering, yep. comedy improv, Yes, that's where you got that pitch from just now, <laughs> oil and gas explosives, Yes, uh, things that go boom, podcasting, Yes, and competitive soccer. Yes. Uh, boy, that, that is a they, mix. They don't go together. That doesn't seem that natural. That doesn't seem no? to mesh very well. I've, so you're a real renaissance sort of guy? I've, you know, I always, as I was growing up, I, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. As I, I was growing up, I always thought that, I, you know, it's the right thing to be a Renaissance man, to have experiences in a lot of different areas. And, and now I somehow ended up here. <laughs> All right. So now you've got carbon nanomaterials. Yes. All right. Can, can, you, can you explain to me and, you know, my uh, five-year-old granddaughter what a carbon man, nanomaterial is and how you got into this industry? Well, yeah. So carbon nanomaterials, um, they were really f uh, discovered in 1985 uh, by a scientist, Dr. Richard Smalley and, and Harold Croto and Robert Curl at Rice University, which is in Houston. And uh, it's the third form of carbon. So we're all familiar with diamond, we're familiar with graphite, and now there's a whole gamut of molecules, the, the most abundant of which is, looks like this. This is a, a, a model of the buckyball, and if you imagine a soccer ball, the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. So you have this spherical molecule of 60 carbon atoms. Um, they won the Nobel Prize for this discovery. In fact, they won it in a short 11 years. Uh, and the way I got involved with it, uh, at the time my business partner Robert Wong was working at the Texas Center for Superconductivity at the University of Houston, go, go Cougs. Um, and his professor, Dr. Paul Chu, is actually pretty famous in the superconductivity world, uh, one day came in. At the time, this material, so this So you're holding up literally what appears to be a soccer ball that is, doesn't have any leather on it, is just the framework of a soccer ball. Yeah, it, it, like a, a soccer ball created by a uh, chemistry student. Okay. Right, with but, the chemistry pieces. But this is a naturally occurring molecule, or do we have to make it? So it is naturally occurring. In fact, if you collect the soot off of a candle, you can get some parts per million, parts per Thank billion. Thank you for saying that. Of, yes. uh, of buckyballs, right? It's really, yeah, it's important to know that. Um, it's not naturally occurring in large quantities. Right. Uh, when when um, my business partner was separating this material, this material was selling for six thousand dollars per gram. So that's a nice price point for a and, product that you might sell. And chimney sweeps uh, get this for free. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you're in the presence of oxygen, it's actually very hard to make large quantities. So you, yes. They, then the chimney sweeps would have to know like the, the HPLC processes in order to separate it. But yeah, it is naturally occurring. And um, so my professor Chu came in and asked my business partner, you guys are young guys. This is a, you know, obviously a hot topic, a really sexy material. Why don't you go start a company? And my business partner is from a, 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 an entrepreneurial background. And so this was selling for $6,000 a gram. So he started, I was studying mechanical engineering at the University of Houston, and they kind of brought me on board. He had another business partner. They brought me on board uh, to help them design the equipment. 
Um, and it turns out that equipment is actually the most efficient equipment for producing fullerenes. We've traveled the world, visited with other people who manufacture, uh, and, and it's the most currently the most efficient. We're actually invested in other technologies uh, to make it even a, a mass production process. It's currently a batch process. Now, let me stop you there, because yep. you've mentioned buckyball and you mentioned fullerene. Yes. Where does that come from? So um, when uh, Dr. Richard Smalley and Her Harold Croto and Robert Curl discovered it, uh, they kind of leaned on uh, Buckminster Fuller, Thank you. right, who is a, is a famous architect. He actually kind of put to the forefront the geodesic dome. And this actually has the shape, and I'm holding it up again, of a geodesic dome. Uh, and so they wanted to pay homage to, to uh, Fuller. And so they call them the gamut of molecules. So there's C60, which is like a soccer ball shape. C70 is more of a rugby ball shape. And then C76 and a lot of even numbers going up, and those get more round as they get larger. Um, I mean, this is... That's this, pretty round. Yeah, C60 is pretty round. C70 gets the oblong. Um, uh, so they wanted to pay homage to, to uh, Fuller, and so the gamut of molecules is called fullerenes, and then the most uh, abundant is affectionately called the buckyball. Yeah. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but it's, no. it's too good a story for where these names come from. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the story, I'm actually currently going back and rereading, there's a book called The Miracle Molecule. Uh, no, the most beautiful molecule is what it's called, and it's the, it talks about the story of the discovery of Buckyball, how Curl and 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 Croto and Dr. Smalley, what their grad students did instead of what they did, and how they kind of collectively just came up with the concept that this soccer ball shape was the right shape uh, for carbon sixty because they had this peak on a chart uh, that said carbon sixty. What was, the heck is that? Yeah, right? that, it doesn't. It didn't make sense in that context. So that story is an amazing story, and uh, and yeah, it's really amazing how this was discovered. Uh, some incredible things about the buckyball. It's harder than a diamond. It'll actually turn into a diamond. Uh, one of the ways I describe it, it's actually got six-fold symmetry. So it's one of the most symmetrical molecules that enables it to hold a whole lot of electrons and release a whole lot of electrons. Um, you know, lithium in your, in, in battery cells, like in your cell phone, over time, that lithium tends to, like, the battery starts not performing as well. That's because of degradation of the lithium. This molecule is actually so symmetric and so strong, you won't have that degradation. So we may see buckyball batteries uh, at some point in the future. And you're probably invested in that. Um, not yet. <laughs> I mean, we're the largest manufacturer and distributor. Uh, so we are kind of have our fingers in, in everything, our hands in everything, um, but we don't have any specific investments. The next best technology is actually solar cells. So organic solar cells, obviously really valuable. Um, they're flexible and you can just lay them out on things. Um, and there's a company in Boston that we're, we have a partnership with to bring to the forefront another production process for fullerenes and then to kind of help support their um, efforts in solar cell technology. Okay, so this is a very expensive molecule. And so you said, gee, I like expensive molecules because there's profit here. So what? It's an expensive molecule. I mean, I don't chew diamonds to... They're also ex expensive. Yeah, exactly. To extend my lifespan. Maybe yeah. maybe I should. Yeah. Uh, wh why this molecule? Well, so they won the Nobel Prize in 11 years, right? And the reason they run it, won it so quickly is the scientific community knew that it was going to be very important. In fact, a lot of the community hearkened it to a 3D version of benzene. You know how important benzene is, right? It's in most medicines. It's the foundation of most medicines, certainly the foundation of plastics. We really don't have modern society without a benzene ring. And now you take a 3D version of benzene, pretty quickly everyone's like, well, this is going to be really important. Thus the Nobel Prize. Also, if it's really important, we're going to use it in a lot of places, we need to know if it's toxic. Benzene is, in fact, toxic, right, until you yep. add stuff to it. Uh, so they assumed it would be toxic. They did a toxicity study in 2012 at, at the University of Paris. Uh, so they gave rats water, rats olive oil, and then I start to kind of make a distinction between C60 and ESS, ESS60 at this point. Because C60 when you, is for industrial applications and when you improperly process it is known to be harmful. ESS60 is C60 that's been processed for safer human consumption. And so they gave those rats water, olive oil, and then olive oil with ESS60 in it. 
And instead of being toxic, the rats lived 90% longer than the control group. Like, That's not bad. <laughs> the current, well, the current best research uh, process, and I know you were into intermittent fasting, straight up calorie restriction, which most people aren't signing up for, uh, it no. gets you a 30% extension in life. Right. So we're talking a threefold increase over the previous best way to extend your life. It's pretty amazing. Not only was their life extended 90%, it was done on Worcester rats. They, they tend to die at about 32 months. Uh, the rats given ESS-60 and olive oil, they lived to 62 months. All the rats given water had tumors, because that's typical of a Worcester rat. The ones given ESS-60 and olive oil, none of them had tumors. I think that's a pretty important piece of this research, because typically tumor, the amount of tumors a Worcester rat has is increases over time. So they lived twice as long and had no tumors. And I know that, that like people start thinking right away, like, oh, anti-cancer, you gotta be really careful. There's a big difference between you know, being able to turn a cancer around and doing preventative things so that you don't get cancer, uh, but the implications are pretty, pretty profound. So you know, in, in, in my area of work back when I was a transplant surgeon and a transplant immunologist, same thing with transplant drugs. They are toxic and we always had to find you know, the toxic level. So when rampamycin came out, uh, these tests are, are done in rats and lo and behold, rather than kill the rats, the rats who were given rapamycin live significantly longer. Right. And you know, obviously we eventually found, I didn't, uh, smarter people than me, uh, found the mammalian target of rapamycin, which we now know exists in, in all animals, uh, including worms. Uh, so we know wh how rapamycin worked and it was, it, it, mammalian target rapamycin, TOR, mTOR, is an energy sensor. So, okay, so the rats live longer. How does this stuff work? So um, that's a great question, and smarter than people than me will probably figure that out, and so far, we don't know exactly. What we do know is that this formulation is a great antioxidant, so there's some research that says it's 172 times more powerful than vitamin C. Uh, and it's an anti-inflammatory. And a lot of current aging processes, you know, thought is that aging is a, is a function of oxidation and inflammation. And so it's, at least in this kind of mindset, it's not surprising that something that helped mammals, rats live 90% longer, is both a, an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. Beyond that, we don't know. We, we do understand that, that the um, buckyballs, uh, carbon-60, will get in the mitochondria and participate in the ATP processes in there. And so that obviously has some significant ramifications. I mean, if you fill a room full of um, kind of mitochondria experts and you say, hey, if you had a free radical sponge, right, absor that can or, uh, absorb these oxidative species uh, right there in the mitochondria, would that be a good thing? And most would probably agree, yes, that'd be a really good thing. Well, maybe that's the mechanism that's going on. We, we also know that it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Ah. And so that is both nerve-wracking, right, and typically, um, and pretty exciting. So our, our, our customers, uh, and we'll probably talk about testimonials here in a little bit, are reporting very interesting things um, as, as they take the product. Now, earlier you mentioned that it's a great electron donor, or it carries bunches of electrons. It can, yes. It can absorb and release many without degradation of the molecule. So to my way of thinking, you know, I, many people believe that life exists only to move electrons from one level of charge to another, which is pretty humbling. <laughs> uh, but it may be that that's true. Yes. Uh, so I think if you had something that carried uh, and could donate uh, a lot of electrons and even absorb other electrons, that might be a fun thing to look at or to have. Yeah, I, well, and then you just talk about how free radicals are just charged, uh, charged elements or charged right. molecules, and, can, and boom, it can c contain those or uh, um, you know, interact with those. And, and it's clearly interacting, it, well, it seems to be clearly interacting in a positive way, certainly in this uh, 2012 study, which is a, interesting. So it's a peer-reviewed published study. That's what you always look for in quality research. Um, and our company provided uh, the carbon 60 in that study and we're actually referenced in that paper. So we're pretty proud of kind of being out there and supporting the, the carbon nanomaterial environment from again, the beginning 1991 is when we started. Wow, okay, why did you put it in olive oil? 
So um, I'd like to say that I was smart enough to be the one to put it in olive oil. Uh, it was actually in that original study in Paris that they decided to put it in olive oil. And it turns out, so this is interesting. I know you have, I watched a video of yours about olive oil. You have like scoured the earth and found a really high quality polyphenol rich olive oil. Um, and that's important, right? Yep. But um, what, what happened in this original study is they gave their rats again water, olive oil, and then olive oil with ESS60. The ones they gave olive oil to lived 30% longer. Oh, I love it. Right? Yeah. So whatever olive oil you're taking, you should take more. I love your, you know, food is purpose is to get olive oil into your mouth, into your body. Very true. Uh, and like I'm constantly adding more. So um, it may have been just serendipitous that he chose olive oil or maybe he's French and he ate olive oil all the time and thought, well, this is what I would want if I were a rat. And maybe rats like olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have products that are in MCT. In fact, my kind of morning routine is to take our MCT products product, add that to a little coffee to have a little kind of uh, bulletproof coffee yeah. kind of uh, experience. And then I'll, um, and then I'll have my dose. And I, my typical dose is about a tablespoon. Uh, what we have in our packaging is one teaspoon, uh, but I, I'm, I up it because uh, you, you know, can. Get, get, I can and get more olive oil. Like I really think um, even prior to listening to your books that olive oil is a really important thing to be consuming on a regular basis. Right. So I don't know that there's a specific reason uh, that, that they chose olive oil. Uh, it is the product that we promote. So one thing a lot of people, there's some MCT carbon 60 products. And again, I would recommend that you look for ESS 60, safer for human consumption. Um, but what, what you gotta know about MCT or uh, carbon 60 and even ESS 60 and MCT is it's significantly lower concentration, right? So you can get about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter in olive oil and you can get about 0.35 milligrams per milliliter, less than half in MCT. So ah. if, you, if you want the same um, raw ingredient, value from the raw ingredient, you've got to take more than double the dose. So it's something to be aware of. Okay, so when something's done in rats, how, or how do you know how much a human needs to take? I'm sure you get yeah. that all the time. Yes, so um, if you just did, based on the experiment, um, so actually this is really, really interesting. In that original experiment, they didn't give the rats any doses until they, until they were 10 months old. It's about a third of their life. And then they only gave them doses for seven months. And then the rats, even after that, no more doses, lived 90% longer. We're currently working on uh, the first parts of a trial to recreate the experiment. That's the scientific <coughs> process, right? Mm -hmm. Get a result, recreate the result. Uh, we, we are not going to stop giving the doses at month 17, so it would be interesting what kind of extension we have um, uh, from, from that point. Uh, when, if you looked at the dosage that the rats actually got in the study, and you just did a per kilogram basis, we would be taking a cup of olive oil per dose, or a cup of ESS-60 in olive oil per dose. You and I would like that, that fundamentally, <laughs> um, but most people are not comfortable with a cup. So uh, what you really need to do is what's called an allometric calculation. Uh, so there's a way to take in, obviously the metabolism of a rat is very different than the metabol metabolism of a human, and this is super geeky. The way you equate them is by surface area. So it feels very engineering to say, if you take the surface area of a rat and you compare it to the surface area of a human, you actually use those numbers to figure out what the right dosage is, right? Because this happens yeah. all the time. First experiments happen in rats and then they go to human trials. Um, so we did an allometric calculation and ended up right at about 0.5, uh, excuse me, five milliliters, which is a, a teaspoon, right at a teaspoon uh, for a single dose. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how we ended up at that, that kind of nomenclature or that, that value. Could you overdose? Um, I have seen YouTube videos of people taking bottles of this, so 100 mils at a time. So not the full cup, but 100, 120 These mils at a time. These are very rich people. These are very, very rich people. Yes, they have access. It, it's a good thing it's not $5,000 a gram anymore. No, <laughs> but. but still very rich people. Um, and, and I know that the very first guy to go to market with a C60 in olive oil, and he purchased his C60 from us, uh, he said before he was gonna sell this, 
The night before he went online, he downed two bottles, which had a little effect on his system, uh, but, but he had you know, 200 milliliters in one single dose. So really, it doesn't have a known toxicity level. I think it would kind of might equate to what's the toxicity level of olive oil. And once we figure that out, it's probably the same. <laughs> so far, nobody's gotten that yeah, much in. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's That's really... n- the Mediterranean diet isn't like just chug it until Correct. you pass yeah, out. Until you pass out <laughs> or throw up. <laughs> and I do actually have some patients who really push uh, olive oil early on in their experience and do notice uh, that their bowel movements change yes. sometimes quite loosely, yep. uh, but once you become acclimated to it. And Dave Asprey talks about this uh, with MCT yep. oil. A lot of people uh, think they ought to start with a tablespoon or two tablespoons and often regret that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have about a teaspoon in it. It has an impact. Yeah. It, it definitely has an impact. Yeah, and certainly my patients, women, are more sensitive to MCT oil, for instance, in terms of diarrhea, so. Okay. It's, it's interesting you mentioned Dave Asprey because when he was on your podcast last time, it was kind of exciting for me. I watched that podcast and he talked about, you know, having a secret formula that uh, extends rats. And in his case, he mentioned mice by lives by 95% and wasn't able to share it. Well, I mean, I'm holding up the buckyball. That's the material that he was talking about, which is pretty exciting for me and, and the direction the industry is gonna go. Yeah, and actually I was just on uh, Dave's, it's a special secret podcast for subscribers for him. Oh yeah? And so we got into the nitty gritty and uh, he's so impressed with C60 that he is invested in, apparently not your company, but there are other companies, but they probably get the product from you. They, they probably do, yes. Okay. I, I would argue if they're getting safe product, they probably get it from us, yeah. So how do you know a safe product from uh, not so, so safe product? Because so there's a lot of them out there. Yes, yeah. Well, and, and there's kind of two levels of safe product versus not safe product. So the first is if you're just interested in getting the powder and some people are interested in getting the powder and mixing it themselves. Uh, and, and we've always kept kind of smaller quantities available for end users because it can get expensive. And so that's a way to kind of mitigate that cost. And then the other is once you get the ESS60 or C60 in, in oil, whatever type of oil, um, how do you remain safe? Uh, and, and, and there's challenges here. Um, I can tell you in the process of separating and purifying pure C60, you need to use solvents. Solvents such as toluene or hexane, um, things that in general we don't want to be around. Yeah, don't right? scare us like that. Well, and remember, hexane is used in a lot of plant extracts. True. So it, like the kind of food and supplement industry knows how to work with these, but you got to work with them the right way. Uh, and the buckyball is a little bit different in how it interacts with these solvents. Uh, so it's very important that you get these solvents out, right? And for us, that's called ESS60. Make sure the solvents are out, they're baked out, uh, they're washed out, and then now you've got a product that's safer for human consumption. And that's really important. You wanna make sure that that's also what's in the oil. So it's interesting, cause I'm, my, my kind of story is, is, you know, started as a carbon nanomaterial scientist. And then in 2012, this study comes out and Uh, In mid-2013, we start getting some phone calls about how much in a dose. And if you think about me with my carbon nanomaterial scientist hat on, no, this goes in tires and batteries and solar cells. You don't put this in your body. So we actually added to our labeling, not for human consumption for the first time in company history uh, in the mid-2013. The data was clear, right? Uh, C60 improperly processed, Harmful C60 properly processed, which we call ESS60, was beneficial and not harmful. They injected it subcutaneously in rats. They made them inhale it. Uh, And then obviously we have this rat study, which turned out not to be a toxicity study, but they lived 90% longer. Um, Fast forward to 2017, uh, a guy with a really big YouTube following started talking about the benefits that he was getting from taking the product and the industry sold out. Except for us, because we're the largest manufacturer and distributor of the raw ingredient. Um, so really we entered 2018, and we had to ask ourselves two questions. And the first one's a moral question. I take it, my wife takes it, everybody on my team takes it. I'm comfortable selling it to you. I think that's the first and most important thing. And then of course, FDA, FTC, you have supplements, so you're aware of the challenges that you may have there. You need to stay on the right side of those organizations also. Uh, so it was really in 2018 that we decided to move forward with this supplement. And, and I think 
I'm an interesting kind of supplement guy. I think there's usually two paths. A lot of people are like, hey, I'm gonna get really wealthy, so let me be a supplement guy. I have no problem with people being wealthy, that's just not how I got here. And the other is, um, maybe they have their own physical challenges, <laughs> yeah. and they find solutions for their challenges, <laughs> and then they wanna save the world. I have no problems with people saving the world, but that's not how I ended up here. I ended up here because I manufacture a material, right, since 1991, they do a toxicity study, the rats live 90% longer, and now people want it. And so I'm sharing it and you know, going out there and getting the word out there about the material. So I'm, I'm a little different in terms of a supplement guy. Okay, so, so you're, you've been manufacturing this stuff forever. Yes. And so the, the, the rat study comes out, and so you say, well, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna start trying this on myself and my wife. Uh, did you try it on your wife first? Of course. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to convince my wife actually to try it. Um, and, and I didn't, I took a couple doses back in 2013, uh -huh. and I didn't, like, I didn't take much, and I didn't, you know, really, the, 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 didn't the, notice the, didn't really notice anything. Um, and then in 2018, right when, you know, the, really the kind of internet starts clamoring for the product, that's when I started taking it in earnest. And, and some of the, like, what I noticed, very specific things, and it's often very subtle. I don't know if this happens when you get people, you know, off lectins. You, do you kind of have to quiz them to say, are you noticing you're sleeping better or your bowel movements are better? What, you, sometimes you have to query people in mm -hmm. order to get the mm -hmm. right information. For me, um, I used to get migraines, and I, I actually have a spreadsheet. It was only four or five migraines a year, with migraines really suck, uh, and I had a spreadsheet, so I was trying to figure out why, what, what was it? triggering them. Yeah. Um, I didn't get any migraines in 2018, which is the year I started taking them consistently, uh, and then in 2019, I actually got two migraines. So I should have had eight to 10, now I've had two. So that's a pretty, you know, when we talk about it crossing the blood-brain barrier, it's got the opportunity to do things that, you know, in the brain that other things that can't cross that barrier do. I can tell you, my wife, um, she was getting about nine migraines. There's some medication that you can take and they only prescribe nine because it's strong. Right. Um, yeah. And now she's down to one or two per month. So it definitely has, at least with us, th those types of implications. Well, as my listeners and viewers know, I used to have lots of migraines. I did baby heart transplants with migraines, which I don't recommend. Wow. Um, and you know, one of the things that I've noted, and many of my patients know, is when they avoid lectins, their migraines go away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's and there's there's lots of ways to skin a cat. One of the things that you experimented on yourself, and whenever I'm looking at a new supplement or one of my patients says, what do you think about this supplement? And I don't know about it or I've not tried it, I'll say, okay, you know, I'll, I'm gonna try this research on myself. Research it first, right, right, research it first. And, you know, <laughs> and before I, I'm gonna let you know. Yeah. And I've done that with you know, actually everything I've done. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you, get, you see something. But one of the things, so we're gonna talk about what people have noticed, yeah. but I'm gonna bring up an interesting placebo effect. Okay. So uh, a few years now, um, uh, nicotin nicotinamide riboside mm -hmm. came out as a NADH enhancer, an NAD positive, and a lot of hype, yep. tons of hype, and there, Clearly now are some human studies that this does uh, increase NAD to a small amount. Right. But a, a friend of mine who has a very nice supplement company, when she started promoting it, she, her first commercial was, I can't tell you the immediate buzz of energy I get after swallowing this. It is so remarkable that, you know, 10 minutes after I swallow you this, know it. I know it. And she's a friend of mine, and I go, well, actually, that's impossible. <laughs> it's, it's not how it works. You, 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 know, you can have a jolt of caffeine, and I can tell you, feel you'll it. feel yeah. it. But that's not how that drug works. And so you've had some amazing you know, anecdotal reports. Yeah. So why don't you share that with me? But 
listeners should know that anecdotes are that. Yeah. Uh, your rat study is not an anecdote. Right. Okay. Right. But that's peer-reviewed published research exactly. and, and that's nice and solid. Actually, speaking about this, I, I maybe I can get your input and maybe you've got, I'm kind of on two quests. So one quest is, is there a, another study peer-reviewed published on mammals that has a longer result? Right, so okay. I don't know if anybody in your audience or you are aware of it, if you ever are, send it my direction because I want to be aware of it because I'm out here saying it's the longest result. I believe it is, but if there's another one, I'd like to know. The other is, I, this is a really, I don't know, nerdy, really important question, I think. And I think there's, there's a number, we may never be able to know the number, but what percentage of stuff that happens in or doesn't happen in a rat does or doesn't happen in a human. We all know we do yeah. rat trials first and then they go to human trials. And I don't know what percentage like, oh, we saw this effect in a rat, you know, what happens in humans? And I, and I actually um, asked a, a professor from DePaul University, he does rat studies and kind of carries them into human trials and I asked that question. And he gave a really interesting story. He said, there was, here's what scientists will hold up and say, you can't believe what happens in a rat will happen in a human. And it basically was a morning sickness drug and they gave it to the rats and there was, you're maybe familiar with this one, right? The rats were fine and then they started doing human trials and unfortunately uh, the fetuses were coming out deformed. Correct. And so this is what a lot of scientists will say, look, this is the evidence, you can't take what happens in a rat and apply it to humans. And then this uh, DePaul University professor, he came back and said, the problem was is they never looked at the fetuses of the rats. Had they looked at the fetuses of the rats, they were deformed. And so when this professor who has a lot more experience like with rat studies going to human studies than I do, um, says this is the pinnacle and it's wrong, it, it implies that there's a lot of applicability. A lot of people don't know that we're closer genetically to rats than rats are to mice. Right, so genetically, our intuition isn't accurate as with a lot of things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's another quest. If anybody has some ideas about what is the applicability of what happens in a rat that happens to a human, I'd love to kind of understand that better. And we, we have more in common with rats than dogs, unfortunately, Gene <laughs> genetically. Yeah. And my yeah. wife reminds me of that all the time. <laughs> rat. You dirty yeah, rat. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, all right. So, tell me. Uh, so, how many how many people do you have trying this stuff? We've so there's that we have thousands of customers. We actually sell the powder into other organizations. They've got thousands of customers. Um, it's a pretty small market. So there's probably fifteen to twenty thousand people who are taking this on a regular basis. So it's new and still significant, right? It's it's nothing compared to CBD. CBD is going crazy and you know you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a CBD store or somebody selling it. Um, and I and I believe it has bigger implications than CBD. Wow, that's a that's a bold st statement. That's a bold I've got statement. I've got some in fact some of my employees uh, uh, their family members were taking CBD and we give a generous di discount to our employees and now <laughs> their discounted material goes to their family material, family members um, who are no longer taking CBD, right? The, 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 my understanding of the research behind CBD is that if you're, you know, the really strong research is if you're a child with a very specific form of epilepsy, the FDA says this is really good. Other than that, there's a lot of uh, anecdotal type things related to CBD as well. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The placebo effect is strong. Yes. Um, yeah. I see. Just as an aside, uh, I see about a, a fifty percent response rate in my patients to CBD for whatever they're looking for. Right. Right. Whether it's sleep, whether it's pain relief, it's. Uh, but isn't it's, placebo about forty-eight? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think we. Have, yeah. It's. Okay, so what are people reporting? Um, so the most, and by the way, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of benefits. So I definitely have to say the FDA hasn't evaluated our product. It's not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. Is it grass? It, it is not grass. We're working on the process of grass. Right? Grass is not, we're not talking about marijuana. <laughs> uh, we're talking about generally regarded as safe. Yeah. D-R-A-S. Which is a FDA nomenclature for something that's generally regarded as safe. So yeah, we we're, we're certainly have a, a GRAS a consultant that's 
that's helping us and we're working to navigate those waters. Um, the most consistent testimonial that we get is, is better sleep. I, I notice you have an aura ring, yep. I've got an aura ring. I'm actually doing a study with a scientist at Aura um, and they of course have lots of data of people who True. haven't tried my product and so we're gonna send the product and see data afterwards. I can tell you already that my own data, some of my own data doesn't match the data that, that his name's Benjamin with Aura has shared with me and, and it's interesting. It's alcohol, like when you have drinks at night, your resting heart rate takes longer to get to the low point. True. Mine doesn't. So what you're saying, this allows you to drink more? So, um, yes, <laughs> I can say- you, you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that we, have a, a num <laughs> we, have, we <laughs> have a number of testimonials and myself included. And, and I, I, I actually feel, my wife and I feel when we travel, um, we get less experience with um, jet lag. Jet lag, right? Yeah, uh, like I woke up today at 6.20 California time in Houston, it was 8:20. Right. You know, given when I went to sleep, it's the right time actually for me to wake up. And weird things happen like it. So one testimonial, um, I, I was given the product to so, to our, my office mate, like in the office next door. And and I came and visited. I was like, so how, how's your experience? She's like, Chris, you know, I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm I'm not experiencing anything. Uh, and I said, well, how's your sleep? And her eyes just got huge. And she's like. Well, I've been tech, you know, Facebooking saying I'm waking up at 5.30 in the morning now, well rested. And, and so sleep is the most consistent. Another, I've got a business coach. Uh, he said for 50 years, I needed an alarm clock to wake up. Since I tried this formulation, I'm waking up without the alarm clock. So, and we all know that sleep is really, really important. Current sleep aids knock you out, Correct. right? They release the chemical pressure to desire sleep. So when you wake up, you don't feel like you need sleep but they don't let you get your in-rim and your rim sleep. Our product, our customers typically take it in the morning. Our customers typically report kind of mental focus and energy during the day and then better sleep that night. So if something more fundamental uh, is going on. It's gonna be exciting as we learn what that is. All right, so besides sleep, what are people seeing? Well, um, a lot of people are talking about uh, arthritis, pain relief. Okay. Um, I mentioned better sleep, which helps everything. I've got testimonials of uh, a, 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 a lady with her child who was actually going to the hospital for mental illness issues uh, in 2019, she didn't take him at all and he was on the product. So again, maybe crossing the blood-brain barrier, uh, maybe better sleep. Um, we, we have people growing back hair, which, you know, I'm a scientist and I'm concerned about the testimonials we're getting. Uh, but one lady was like, I'm growing back hair and it's not coming in gray, it's coming in blonde. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Even though she was a brunette? <laughs> <laughs> no, no more hair dyes, it's, yeah, it's right. awesome. Um, and then we, we also have people who uh, talk about better eyesight, right? So that their eyesight has improved, which is, again, makes me uncomfortable. I'm just sharing kind of what right, our right, customers sure. are sharing with us. Uh, and let me just say, I've been, I've been fiddling with stuff now for a while. Well over a year, I don't use your products, which is yet. which is yet. I, probably your product is in what I take. Yes. Uh, so and so I, uh, I think this is the reason I wanted you on. I think that uh, we should all, particularly you know, in the longevity paradox, we're looking at finding things that we can take that don't hurt us and that have the potential to yeah. make us uh, healthy long into the future. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, so, hopefully 90% longer. Yeah, hopefully 90. Uh, okay, so where can my listeners find out about you? So they can go to my website. It's myvitalc.com. Um, if you scroll down the page, and we can actually put together a coupon for your audience if that Ooh, makes sense. Oh, that would be wonderful. Use the coupon code GUNDRY, and that'll get you an additional 15% off. Okay. So you might want to look for this one, um, which is this single dose, and we've got a 30, this is a sample, but the, the, we've got a 30 pack, so you have exactly 30 days of five mils per day. Um, and that product is about 129 and you get it discounted to under $100 uh, if you get on subscription. Again, you can cancel that at any time. So when everybody swallows deep and oh geez, $100 a month, uh, how, what are you spending at Starbucks these days, everyday folks? And uh, 
You know, years ago, I started taking a product, I won't mention it, um, a longevity product. And I was talking to a, a very good friend and advisor. And I said, you know, this stuff is a dollar a day. Now, this was 20 years ago. And that's I said, a lot, 20 years ago, I yeah. said that's, you know, that's a lot of money. And he says, wait a minute. He says, you're telling me that this stuff, you believe it works. I said, oh yeah, the research is very solid. He said, and you wouldn't spend a dollar a day uh, for something you believe is going to affect your lifespan and yeah. your health? And I said, yeah, good point. Yeah, uh, I think some, sometimes people you kind of lose track. So spend a dollar and make sure you're getting the right quality product, especially true. if you're putting it in your body. All right, well, that's great. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to take an audience question, one of my favorite questions. And Mark Jordan Isobal on YouTube asks, how can one heal from severe eczema? Cortisone, steroids, antibacterial remedies, and antihistamines are only working temporarily. That's a great question. And it's actually one of the reasons I wrote the Dr. Gundry uh, family cookbook, which just came out just, uh, a month ago, and I see a lot of kids in my practice and young adults with eczema, and quite frankly, eczema is a sign of leaky gut. And once you heal your leaky gut, your eczema will go away, period. And that's actually one of the reasons I started working with kids, because this is a solvable problem. Just remember that the skin, it, your gut is your skin turned inside out, and what happens on the surface of your gut is reflected on your skin. And that's just showing you that you got a really raw, red, irritated gut wall, and you can fix it. And one of the ways to fix it is to get lectins out of your diet, which are really good at making leaky gut. So thanks for your question. All right, that's all for the Dr. Gundry podcast. We will see you next week, and Thanks again, Chris, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you.